our theme for the year is witnessing the glory of God. And it's amazing to think that we are in the last few months of the year. I mean, three months left. Uh, it's really incredible to think about, but God has kept us and encouraged us through this theme of witnessing his glory and looking for his glory, looking to see God move uh, in everything, looking to see him in everything. I pray that you have uh, been doing that this year um, and just looking for God's glory because his glory is all around us and we want to witness the glory of God. We also want to be uh, that facilitator of God's blessings uh, through what God has called us to do. I'm especially grateful um, this week. Uh, God has been doing a lot. It's been a busy month. I've had a chance to um, travel and, and watch God work um, with people around the country as we, you know, race to save uh, babies' lives and save women's lives. It's been incredible to be among people that are focused and mission-driven for their lives and doing what I believe are the purposes of God, working on behalf of uh, people that they don't even know, but fighting again that people could live, women and children. And again, that's a threat in our country and in our world where babies die before their first birthday and women are dying. Um, um, maternal mortality is the highest it's ever been and women are dying at rates that they just should not be. And most of the conditions are preventable. And so again, taking care of people, um, God has called us to do that in different ways and creating community where people can be taken care of. And so I've been just uh, grateful and really full. Also, uh, part of the past few weeks, I've been able to participate in a couple of conversations of uh, the intersection of faith and mental health, which have been really exciting because, again, as the needs have increased in the last couple of years under this pandemic, the mental health needs are just incredible. And there's so many people that have responded to the crisis. And again, it's a blessing to see those of the faith that understand mental health and wellness are really pursuing it and have this foundation of God's word, but they also have understanding and expertise that they're bringing uh, into the space now, which is just refreshing for someone like me to see because I see God working beyond uh, religious walls and really working from that spiritual place, faith place, uh, biblical place when it comes to mental health and wellness. And so again, I'm meeting wonderful people uh, that are uh, clinical uh, uh folks that are actually saved. And it's just exciting and being in conversations to hear about the incredible things that people are doing to really save lives. And especially with the crisis, even of our young people, just knowing that there are clinicians and workers out there that are ready and in place to support. And that's how God is, is really filling those gaps and people are interceding for others. And I pray that you continue to do that. God is great and greatly to be praised. And this idea that we shared of becoming a vexia, becoming well, wellness our well-being. That is God's concern. It's not uh, man's, uh, just man, but God has been concerned about our well-being right from the beginning. We see from Genesis when God immediately put a plan in place to bring us back to himself, that we can be connected with him. And connected with God is the ultimate way to ensure and secure our well-being and wellness in him. So I thank God for you all. This month's theme is darkness has to flee. So again, we talk about the glory of God, the light of God shining. We know there's so many things that don't want the light of God to shine, and there's darkness all around us. But again, we'll be identifying things, specific areas that God wants to come and bring light to. And be clear, God wants us to bring light to the darkness. And when we bring that light, then it's important to understand that darkness has to flee. And that is our monthly theme. And we're looking forward to what God is going to speak over this month. And so I thank God for each and every one of you. And again, I mentioned this a little while ago, but we've had the Arise services again. Again, they were just powerful service. Our first one was at Seaport Community. And for those that don't know, this is a movement that's been going on for many, many years now. And it's really about bringing the body of Christ together to pray, to pray for various issues, whether it be around mental health, addiction, family, marriages. We just spend the night just praying and calling out all of these different areas. And to see the body of Christ in its full diversity, different churches, different people, race, ethnicities, everything represented it represented. It was powerful and always is. And so we had two wonderful services um, here in our, our area at Seaport Community. And then, as I said last night, at New Life Kingdom Building in Hart and Windsor, uh, South Windsor, Connecticut, on behalf of our Hartford Arise group. And it was just exciting. And, and um, Minister Adi Kola, I just want to acknowledge you and just get, you know give you a, a minute or so if you just say a word or two about the Arise experience, because I know people may not believe 
from me. So I also want to thank God for your leadership in this movement. And again, you participated. And so any word that you want to share uh, of the experience of the last couple of days, I just want to give you an opportunity, sir. It's always good and great to be in the company of other believers, you know, pastors, people of like-minded, you know, praying, you know, for just one sole purpose mm -hmm. to see the glory of God in uh, in our environment, in our community. Uh, I I so much appreciate it and uh, you know, opportunity to fellowship together, you not know, to to really sit down you know, together, mm -hmm. and especially with you, Pastor. <laughs> you know, getting stuck with you for like four or five hours straight. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful experience. So, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, just like Pastor said, as, uh, God gives us opportunity to mm -hmm. participate in, uh, in this movement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a great experience. It's, it's a wonderful experience. So I bless God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And again, it's always great to spend time with you and our other brothers and sisters that we get to fellowship with. So again, let's so let's get ready for the word of God. And just to share again, things on my mind, I'm sure you're asking what's on has been on his mind this week. Well, as we prepared for that prayer service and I had to speak at, at the service. Um, but as I said, what God had placed on my heart, even outside of just preparing for the Arise service, is really this focus on the harvest. And so again, I'm in Matthew 9, 37 to 38. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest indeed is plentiful, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest. And that's been a constant prayer on my mind for the last few weeks, that we need help. We need more people to come in because as we look at what's happening in the world, again, the crisis just continue to grow and grow. And it's just overwhelming when you think about the needs that we see around us. And we think of, a, of the church and its role, and it's just not showing up in all of these areas. But God is trying to speak to his church and really speaking to each of us, each of you, the gifts that God has placed in us to really, really let God's glory anoint us to do the things that we need to do because the harvest is plenteous. There's, there are lost souls all over the place and the enemy is just trying to kill and, and, and destroy people's lives. And so we need help. And so we need to continue to pray to God to send forth workers into the harvest. And that's my prayers. I think about the different needs, whether it be around mental health, um, medical needs, um, social service, human services. Though I'm praying for those leaders in that sector to really come and help bring in the harvest of God. And so uh, I don't, uh, Thanksgiving, we know, comes up in, in November, but I don't celebrate Thanksgiving the way we have traditionally celebrated anymore. I just have it as a day of just Thanksgiving, and I don't have to wait until that day. I have Thanksgiving now because God has done some amazing things this month for me, and I am overwhelmed. So in my mind, I've just been thanking God. Thank God now for all that he has done in sustaining us and keeping us from danger, even unseen. There's so much happening around us. The enemy is so angry. We are in the last days. Everything is going on. And we just have to thank God that he has kept us. Holly, his grace has been sufficient. And so that's been on my mind that we need to thank God now. And I want to encourage you to have Thanksgiving now. Don't wait for someone to tell you this is the day we do Thanksgiving, but have Thanksgiving in your heart now and just begin to thank God and prepare for the harvest. As God said last week, God wants to harvest some things in you and me, in our community, and we want to be prepared for the harvest. So that's what's been on my mind souls, lost souls. And then again, what do we do to bring in the souls and really who's going to help us do that? That's continued to be on my mind. So I wanted to start with that this morning. And then again, let's get into the word of God for today. And the subject is lighting up the darkness lighting up the darkness. Again, when we see darkness, what do we need to do? We need to bring the light into the darkness. When people don't know, it's an opportunity for us to share and let them know, to illuminate thinking that leads people to this place where they can walk into this transformation that we all talk about, but lighting up the darkness. Those walking in spiritual darkness cannot see the evil all around us. And again, just think about our country. Think about the fragmentation 
education. Think about the chaos. Think about the world. Think about the wars that are happening. Think about the people that you're seeing that are leading these wars. And what they're filled with is this, it's, it's, it's really evil all around us. And it's just darkness causing people to live in such utter chaos. And so when you're not walking in the light of God, you really can't see all that is around us. And you don't even know, are not even aware when you're even in the midst of danger. Some of us, when you've you ever had a point where you've been low in life and, you know, I was sharing over the last few weeks and, you know, people have been asking about my life and my walk with the Lord, but I'm able now to talk about the darkness that was in my life that really wanted me to walk around in depression. So when I fight in prayer about those things, it's, it's familiar to me because I struggled with that when I was in my teens and early 20s. Because again, that spirit, because trauma, childhood trauma brings those things because trauma causes, it splits us up kind of thing. And that, and before we can come back together, there are other things that get in the midst and create barriers for us not to come together. And so when God comes into our lives, I know God brought me back together. Those pieces that people destroyed and, and it all came together when I gave my heart to the Lord, but the enemy always tried to come up and that darkness was around me at times. But again, and the light of God caused that darkness to disappear. And so I thank God that when I gave my heart to him, I didn't walk in that darkness because it's hard when you don't know the Lord, when you sense evil and danger all around you. And that's what that darkness is about. And so we thank God for light today. And if you have the light of God, then know that part of our assignment is lighting up the darkness. And whatever God has called you to do, think of yourself as light going into dark spaces and be excited about that. Hallelujah. So let's talk a little bit more. And we talked about this harvest. And again, there's an urgency of the harvest. And that's what we were sharing. That's why there's prayer going on all the time, because there's an urgency of the harvest. And you heard the scripture, right? The harvest is plenty. It's, just, it, it's so ripe right now, and it's ready. Souls are ready. People are really ready to hear a word from God. And that's why God wants us to witness his glory. He wants his glory to be revealed, because there are so many souls. People are looking for answers, you all. It's true. There really are. But the harvest is ready right now. But the Bible also said that the, the workers or the laborers are few. And so again, we have this big old harvest, but we don't have enough people that are really walking in the light and living this light to even help bring in the harvest. And so that's why the Bible tells us to pray that the Lord of the harvest, that God, Lord, send forth more laborers because people are really struggling right now. And not everyone's trying to jump in the church and, and get material blessings. People are really want, they want peace of mind. People want to, they want to feel secure. They want to feel the presence of God. And as they just don't want things. They actually want deliverance from the bondage and addictions that they are dealing with every day. And the people are lost. Hallelujah. They just need salvation. And so we want to pray to God, Lord, send forth more workers because the enemy has ravished the harvest. And some of us, some people stop praying. You pray, you're not praying for your family members anymore because you just think it's just, it's been so long. They're not coming to the Lord. It's just not true. And the enemy is just ravishing people's lives. Lives, but what are we doing as believers? Why are we on standby looking at things around us when we can actually do something? And so that's what this message is about. Like, as the light of God, what is it that I'm to do in the earth, in the space that I occupy, and what God has called me to do? You are light and light up the darkness around you. And so John 1 5 it says, The light shines. That's important. The light shines in the darkness. Hallelujah. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. And this is the message you have to get today, that light shines in darkness. And when it does, it is so powerful that darkness cannot extinguish the light. And so darkness, this total absence of light, and we're living in a time that there's an absence of the light of God. There are things that you see, situations, conditions that are going on that you can get an abortion right up until the ninth month, and you also can have procedures. Afterwards, there's so many things going on that are just dark. It's just the absence of life where there's no regard for life. The way that men, human beings are treating each other, it is evil because there's an absence of life. No one thinks of life as sacred. No one thinks of humans as sacred God's creation. It's just darkness. So darkness is about this absence of light. And we should not be surprised by what we see. You can't even understand some of the dark things that you see, but that's the way it looks when 
there's an absence of light, the light of God. And so early in that chapter, verse four, that's what came into being, Christ that came to being through the word was life. He brought life to us, and that life was the light for all people. Jesus Christ is the word, and when the word comes, it, the word is life, and that life is light unto people. So when we have the life of God in us, that is the light that shines. Jesus is the light. Jesus shines as the light. Jesus is the life. Hallelujah. And he is the light that shines in darkness. And he allows this light to be in us. And it's a light that darkness cannot quench. The enemy could not stop Jesus. Hallelujah. He was obedient even unto death. We know that he conquered death, hell, and the grave. We know that he is seated at the right hand with God right now, interceding on our behalf. And we know that he is coming back. Hallelujah. The darkness did not stop this light that shines. And it's a light that is present now in me, in you. And there's no dark thing that can quench out or put out the light that is in me, which is the life that comes from the light of Jesus Christ. The verse four says, in him was light. And that was that power to bestow life on others. And life was the light of men. So in Christ was life. And he gave us that life in us. And that's why we can have the light. And we become children of light that carry the life of Christ in us. And Paul wants Christ to be formed in us. Why? Because that he may shine so the glory of God can be revealed that others may worship him. Hallelujah. And that they see and respond to the light that is in us. And so shining in darkness. And regardless of how tough things get, let your light shine. And that's why it's so good as a child to learn those songs. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. When these things get in your spirit, that is something called determination that comes. And when you understand that this light cannot be extinguished by any darkness, it gives you a boldness on the inside. And we want to cultivate that boldness in your children. There's nothing like your child is in your arm. You are the light of God. You are God's child. And when you have your children grow up with that, there's a confidence that they will have. And you have to pray over their lives, pray over their mind, pray over their spirit, that this light, this power that is in them, God, we want it to shine. Let them grow up, hallelujah, in the abolition of the Lord, that they may be light in the world, shining in darkness and all of us. And if your light has been dull, you can say, God, I'm listening to you right now and I need my light to shine a bit more because it's been dull and it's been dim. But you want us to what? Shine in the darkness. First John 4 and 4 says, you are from God, little children, and you have defeated these people because the one who is in you is greater than the one who's in the world. So greater is God that is in us and he that's in the world. So this a opposing forces that's in the world, the devil and all that he is doing, bringing darkness in the world on every level. It is not greater than the light that is in us. And we have to let this light shine. You need to know that greater is he, greater is the light that is in you, greater is the life that is in us, hallelujah, than anything that's in the world, that any darkness comes against us. And that's something simply to understand today, that I have the light of Christ, hallelujah, that I have the light shine shining and I want the light to shine because it would push out any darkness, darkness that comes against you personally and darkness that may come against your home, darkness that may come against your marriage, hallelujah, darkness that may come against your family, hallelujah, darkness that may come against your community. God, let your light shine in me because I know it extinguishes the darkness. The darkness might be great, hallelujah. But remind yourself, but the light is greater. The light is greater. You can bring light. Hallelujah. You know light travels at 186 miles per second. When you learned that in school when you were young, wasn't that fascinating to think about that light moves like that? And so that's our God. He moves quickly. Hallelujah. He may not move in your time or my time. Hallelujah. But just pray. Let the light come. Don't give up on witnessing to somebody. Just pray that the light come. Don't give up on your situation. Just pray that the light will come. Hallelujah. And know that God is expedient. He will move in his time and he moves quickly. Hallelujah. Because the light is greater in us.
And so this light stimulates the sight and it makes things visible, things that you could not see. When the light of God comes and turns on in us, we see things that we otherwise would not see. And that's why David can say, light up my pathway, God. I'm walking here and it seems dark. Let your light shine, hallelujah. And God will empower that spirit within us. And all of a sudden I see where I'm going. Father, I didn't know which way I was gonna go. I didn't know what was going to happen when I was at this stage or that stage in my life, but God allowed his light to shine. And he said, go this way, go left, go right, stay straight. God will give guidance and direction. Hallelujah. And this is the power of that light, making things visible. It makes vision possible. You don't know what you're going to do in life, but God will give you a vision. When I'm sitting in a place of God on my job and I said, Lord, what must I do here? here. Hallelujah. How should we work this or that? God will give a vision. Hallelujah. Bring light. And all of a sudden things begin to come into place. And I see things. Hallelujah. I said, thank you for this vision. And then I'm able and empowered to execute on behalf of heaven. Hallelujah. Because I am a citizen of heaven. So there's power that comes with the light of God. And so for us that are believers walking around like you're powerless, somebody needs to say, turn Turn the light on. The light brings power. So there's a power that comes with this light, a power that extinguishes darkness, and it stays dark. Why? Because darkness can't even come against the light. So there's a power of the light. There's a precision of the light. God wants you to see things, and so there's laser vision that'll come, precise vision that comes with the light of God. I don't have to walk around confused. I am clear that God has made plainly clear for me to see. There's a Decision. I ask God, hallelujah, and he doesn't withhold. He gives me what I need. I ask God for direction and he provides that. I ask God to be with me. He is with me because he promises never to leave nor forsake me to really help me in precision in life. God will give that precision that comes from the light. And there's a purpose of the light. The purpose of the light is to cast out the darkness. The purpose of the light is to light up my way. The purpose of light is to facilitate this life that I live on. On this earth, there's a purpose to the light that he has called to shine in us on this earth. And there's possibilities of the light. There are things you can't do because you can't see, but when you can see, then you can do. Hallelujah. Possibilities come when the light of God, you didn't understand some things, but when light comes, there's understanding. So there's possibilities of the light of Christ that'll shine in you. Things that you did not imagine, all of a sudden you can see because of the possibilities that come from the light and the places of the light. And come on, people of God, God has called us and given us specific gifts. So you need to shine in the place that God wants you to be in. I'm shining in the space where God wants Wants me. It's not just the church, not just Pastor Ken. That's the least of the things that I consider doing for Christ. But our whole life has to be submitted to him. And what he's called me to do is vocation is definitely God's work. And so my place in the light is to shine in maternal and child health. My place is to shine around men and fatherhood. My place to shine is to be out and about, hallelujah, advocating on behalf of women, children, fathers, families. My place is clear, and God will make your place clear. I've been with people this week that their places are clear. They're in research and evaluation. They're in medicine. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, God will do great things for you when you allow this light to shine. You will see his glory. Hallelujah. And darkness will have to flee when God starts moving us together on one accord for the collective. See, the choice, you have to choose life or death. You have to choose life or or darkness. It is a choice. And the Bible lets us know, but the sad part is many people prefer the darkness than light. So that's why we see so much darkness, because there's a preference for darkness. Hallelujah. But you have to choose if you want life or death, light or darkness. Choose ye this day. Hallelujah. What do you choose? What do you prefer? I prefer the light. Hallelujah. And you, I want to encourage you to prefer the light because I'm telling you, it's more powerful than the darkness because the darkness is already defeated. 
Psalm 72, 19, blessed be the glorious, his glorious name forever. And may the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. So we've been talking about witnessing God's glory, witnessing the light of God all around us. You can see God's glory in the earth. God's glory can be seen in everything and everywhere. Oh, I am talking that to the enemy today, that God's glory, hallelujah, is revealed in everything and everywhere. I don't give the enemy any glory for the beauty that we see in the world. Everything and everywhere is God's glory. If you don't believe me, go back to Genesis and start there in creation. God is clear. His glory is revealed in everything and everywhere. Don't give that glory to anyone else. No man, hallelujah, and no creature, hallelujah. But God's glory is in everything and everywhere. Isaiah 43 and 7. Everyone who is called by the name and who I created, listen to that. Everyone who is called by my name, hallelujah, who I created for what? My glory. We are created for God's glory. And if you can see God's glory in the creation, and man is the only part of creation that is difficult, hardly seeing God's glory, because we don't choose to let the light shine. But if you have chosen, hallelujah, to be a child of God, to let the light of God shine, then you need to know we have been created for God's glory. So God intends for his glory to be seen in everyone. It's not his will that anyone should perish. God wants everyone everyone to have eternal life. And that is why we have to push this gospel into the harvest and we have to win souls and we have to let our light shine because he intends for his glory to be seen in each and every one of us. Stop judging people and putting them down, but pray that the glory of God can be revealed in their lives. Pray that the light of God will come and they'll choose life. Hallelujah, because God intends for his glory to be seen. And so who are you and I to put down people, to talk about and disparage people? We should be lifting up and encourage everyone, knowing, hallelujah, that God's intention is for his glory, the light. We have to light up the darkness. Everything, everywhere, everyone. Hallelujah. Everything, everywhere, everyone. The glory must be seen. Everything, everywhere, everyone. Let the light come and everyone everything, everywhere, everyone. Hallelujah. So we're vessels containing God's glory, this earthly vessel. And different types of vessels, but think about the vessel today is like a light bulb. Everything in a light bulb, the power, the potential power, all that's contained in a light bulb. Hallelujah. That is important, but you have to know that even though I have everything inside of me, I need to be plugged into God. I need to be connected to God, to God's power, to his spirit, so to accept We need to be connected. Don't be a Christian that's, yeah, all the potential is there. I see you're a light bulb, but you're not plugged into God. You don't know what's going on. You can't see no better than the person who's not following God because you refuse to really live this life before him. But I'm telling you, we have capacity here, but you need to know I need to be connected to God. So we're a vessel that contains God's glory. Hallelujah, we need to stay connected. Second Corinthians 4 and 7, but we have this precious treasure in us. This good news of salvation is in us. It's in these unworthy earthly vessels, hallelujah, so that the grandeur and surpassing greatness of the power will be shown to be from God in his sufficiency and not of ourselves. And so again, God has selected us, hallelujah, to have his power live in this human body. Hallelujah. But it's by his power, not our own. It's because of God's sufficiency that I am what I am. It's because of God's sufficiency that I do what I do. It's because of God's sufficiency that I grow the way I grow. It's of God's sufficiency that God causes me to advance in life. Hallelujah. Not by my might and power, but by his Hallelujah. And now that's because we're what? Connected to God, connected to a power source. Don't be a light bulb that's not connected to the source because your light will not shine. Hallelujah. It has to be connected to the source of God. So we have a capability because every God has given us everything. But if you don't really plug into the power of God, then you won't have the capacity to do some things. And so there are many that have capability. And it's great. I see you can do this. I see 
see you can do that. But you need capacity. You need the power of God to be inside of us to cause all that capability. The resources come from God. The resources of his anointing, the resources of power causes me to have capacity to execute because capability alone, you'll get tired. But when you have power or resources, you have capacity, you see. Because there are many people that organizations have capability, but they don't have any money to do nothing. Hallelujah. But we need to say, God, do something with my capabilities. I need some capacity. I need some power. Hallelujah. And an organization, the power is money, resources. And for us, it's the same. We need the capacity of God, resources from God, power from him. So the glory of God is the beauty of his spirit, right? It is the beauty that emanates from his very character and all that he is. Hallelujah. And so when his glory is in us, then we should be reflective of his beauty beauty. Hallelujah. It should be emanating in our character, who we are, how we operate, et cetera, et cetera. That light should shine in us and it should be reflective of the image of God. Hallelujah. And his glorious beauty, hallelujah, his spirit. And we should have the same. Do people really see Jesus in you or do they just see Ken? pretending to be like Jesus, or have I become like him? Hallelujah. Have he, Christ really been formed in me? Are people seeing the light of Jesus? Hallelujah. The way I react to things. Hallelujah. The way I live my life, the way I'm with my wife, my family, my community. Do people see Jesus in you? Have we been shining in darkness? Do you shine in darkness? Matthew 5, 14, 16 says, you are the light the light to the world, the light of Christ. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does any lamp, anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket. You don't light it to be a hidden, but you put it on the lampstand and that gives light to all that are in the house. Verse 16, let your light shine before men in such a way. And so again, back to this instruction of our light, it should shine, not just shine to be shining, but shining in such a way. There's an intensity about your shine, people of God. Let it shine in such a way that it may, that they may see your good deeds, that they may see your moral excellence, that they may recognize and honor, glorify Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. So not just any, like, don't be like any other church member or any other believer. No, let your light shine in such a way that it does demonstrate your good deeds. It does demonstrate moral excellence. It does cause people to recognize, and not only recognize God, I see that's God, but also honor. I also want to honor this God. Some of what the king saw, the Hebrew boys like, look, I'm impressed by what I see so much so that I too want to worship your God who's living like that, who's lighting it up like that. So clearly, this is about a life within because of the light that is within. The life that we live in him is stimulated by the light that is within us. Hallelujah. Christ in us. Glory. Hallelujah. Christ in us as we mature, this life in us becomes powerful to the point where others outside see the light that's on the inside. And so that's that capacity. And again, this city set on the hill, the power of God causes it, that capacity, the resource, the strength from God. Hallelujah. You and I can't do anything. So it's okay that you're tired, that maybe you even cried this week because you just felt you couldn't do some things. Well, good. I'm glad you, now you and I know I can't do it. Without God, I can't do nothing. Apart from him, I do nothing. And so God wanted you here today. I'm here to give you capacity. Those with your own businesses, God wants to give you capacity. Hallelujah. So don't be worried. Hallelujah. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. What you cannot do, know that God can do what needs to be done. God, give us capacity. Let your light shine. And so the light will cause you to stick out. Hallelujah. The light from the scripture says, don't even hide it. So if you've been hiding that light, don't hide it. Hallelujah. Put it where it can be seen. Hallelujah. Some of you have been undercover Christians. People don't know you're saved. They don't know what saved means. They don't know what salvation because you haven't said a word, boo. So put it where other people can see this light. 
And the Bible also says, give it to others. We're supposed to be giving this light to others. That be the light of the world. We should be lighting up the world. People that are walking in darkness should see us like lampposts at nighttime. Like there he is, there she is. What's over there? Why it's light over there? Let me go. I should be drawn to you. Are people drawn to you? Or are they repelled by you? Give it to them. And then the quality of the shine, shining in such a way that it causes others to want to worship our God. Hallelujah. Lighting up the darkness. Now, this is a light fixture outside of my house. Next to this light fixture is my front door. When there's daylight out, people can walk from the driveway right up to that front door and have entrance. We think about people coming to God or coming to adore their blessings. When the light is shining, it's clear and there's a clear path. You can look where you're going and you can see yourself clearly to the door. But that's the light outside. And I think about that. I said, now, there have been times when somebody has forgotten to put the light on for outside and I've come home late. And it's been totally dark outside, the darkness, but there was no light. So the darkness prevailed, which made my 22 foot feet trip dangerous from my car to my front door, you all. Because when there's darkness, you cannot see. I have rocks in the driveway. There are other cars in the driveway. And there's a, I have a, a, a concrete two-step to get to my door that if I can't see, I, might, I could misstep and fall down and hit my head on the concrete and die. So when darkness is even there in the simple situation, it could be dangerous. And so it's important for the light and the dark time to what? To be on. Hallelujah. I hope you see that. The light outside has to be lit at certain times when darkness comes. And then I think about, we have a light. This is a lamp on our little table and in, inside. And so again, there've been times that I've come home and I open the door and you can't see because someone didn't leave the inside light on. So the light has to shine on the outside, people of God. And the light also needs to be shining on the inside because if you don't allow the light to shine on the inside, your home can become dangerous. Where you live is dangerous. So even personally, if the light of God is not on in you, then it becomes dangerous. Because getting from the front door just to this table, you could run into shoes, you could run into the piano, you could trip over the rug. It could be a dangerous trip, all because of the difference of light and darkness. There are stairs that I have to get to upstairs. If there's no light, then I could trip over the stairs and fall and hurt myself. Are you getting this simple, simple analogy that we need light on the outside and you need light on the inside? And so the light inside of us, it can be on or off. And if it's off, I'm just saying it's dangerous. So I thank God for others who put the light on the inside. Thank you, wife. Thank you, child in the house. Thank you, somebody, for remembering I need to put the light on for somebody else. Thank you, the person that remembers to flip the switch on when the, they are at nighttime, when it's dark. They said, let me turn the light on the outside so that others may see. I hope you're getting this because we have to turn the light on for others. Hallelujah. Inside the house, inside your family, you need to turn the light on and let the light shine. Because if not, it becomes a dangerous terrain. Let the light shine. Hallelujah. Jesus is the door. And we need to point people to the door. That is your pathway to freedom and from all of your addiction, all of your burdens. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. But for many that don't see the light, that's dangerous. It's dark to get there. But let the light shine so people can see. When the light is shining, it extinguishes the darkness and people can see that door to Christ. Hallelujah. We're in a dark world. Hallelujah. But it does not prevent you and I from shining so that people can see Jesus lighting up the darkness. That's what we're talking about. We, you, me, we have to light up this darkness around us, not to be discouraged by and caught up in it so that we can't move, but inspired by it to light even brighter, lighting up the darkness. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name. We thank you for your word. 
Father, we're living in a very, very urgent time where souls are at stake more than ever. And Father, we want to be clear about our assignments during this hour. We want to be empowered by you to do what you've created us to do in the earth. Each of us have a separate assignment and we want to work together to bring in the harvest of souls. And so we pray, God, that your light would shine in us brighter than ever because of the things around us. We are well aware, hallelujah, of the aggression of the enemy. And we want to turn up the light. And so we pray that you strengthen us and let our light shine bright, hallelujah, in a way, hallelujah, that causes men and women to recognize and honor you. We thank you. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen.